In my last two videos, I talked about some perhaps dubious physics in the expanse, where in deep space, someone had a spaceship circle around them. I made the argument in those videos that as it was presented in the expanse was incorrect, we didn't have the right circular motion. But in my last video, where I went through the mathematics of why I made that argument, there was lots of very interesting comments and discussions in the comments section, which raised some points where in some particular cases you can of course have someone be at the center of a circling ship. So we'll go through the argument again and highlight that special case where if you choose the right reference frame, a rather bizarre looking trajectory can actually be a circular motion. So to recap, of what's going on. We have a ship which we'll draw as a rectangle. We'll distill it to its base qualities. We have a thruster at the bottom. And this thruster is always on. And it's always applying a force in that direction relative to the ship. But at the top of the ship, we have a secondary thruster which fires for a brief time. Now the amount of time that this fires for doesn't really matter in the end, it'll just change some scaling parameters that we'll see at the end. And the effect of this thruster is it applies a force on the ship up here. And this doesn't make a translational motion that way, instead it causes a rotation on the ship. And the reason it causes a rotation is because it's offset from the center of mass. So since we have a force being applied a distance D away from the center of mass, we have a torque. And the torque is written down as tau is equal to D times F. And what does a torque do on a ship? Well, a torque makes the ship rotate around the center of mass. So once this thruster fires, we have a pretty interesting and complex system where what used to be only a force acting that way starts to rotate all around the place according to how the ship is positioned relative to the center of mass. So in the initial case, we have the ship pointing like this, where the force is all that way. At some time later, it might be positioned like this, where the force is now pointing this way. And this comes down to a very interesting point that we must remember is that force is a vector quantity. It has a direction, one of these things, and it has a magnitude how much force there is. Last time I went through the math with these equations, F equals MA and delta P is equal to force times T, which is just saying force is equal to mass times acceleration, and the change in momentum is equal to the force times time. That's all fine and good to do it that way, but this time we're going to do it through differential equations, which makes it a little bit cleaner, especially on the code side. So the way this works is that we're going to be exploiting a fundamental aspect of physics where distance, velocity, and acceleration are all related together through derivatives of time. So if we have some distance d, we can get the velocity by taking the derivative of the distance with respect to time, and that gives us velocity. But if we take another derivative of distance with respect to time, so we do d squared d, dt squared, that gives us the acceleration. And it's pretty clear to see that if we do the derivative of velocity with respect to time, we also get acceleration. So if you have a system of equations like this, an ordinary differential equation, and you have some initial conditions, you can solve the differential equation relatively easily, especially a computer can solve that very quickly as we'll see in a bit. But what we are missing here, what we need for all of this to make sense is an acceleration. And we know that this ship has a force acting on it, which is an acceleration. We can ignore the mass because that doesn't really matter so much. But this acceleration changes over time. We can break it down into a plane. So in the beginning, the acceleration was only acting in the y direction, we'll say. And then sometime later, the acceleration acts at an angle away from the y direction. So what we have is something that might look familiar, a right angle triangle that has some angle. 
So if this length here, the hypotenuse, is the total acceleration, then we can break the acceleration down into components for the y direction, ay, and the x direction, ax. And the way we do this is just with trigonometry. So since we're doing trigonometry, we need to write down Sokotoa. In this case, we don't really care about Toa. We only want the other two. And what we find is that the acceleration in the y direction, it just, this really doesn't matter which way around it goes, is the total acceleration times the sine of the angle theta. And the acceleration in the x direction is equal to the acceleration times the cosine of theta. Now you could choose your angle to be at any other point, say up here, in which case you'd have a different relation, but that doesn't really matter. It's just a choice of your um, coordinate system. So now we have our relation for acceleration in the x and y direction. We have a system of differential equations. We can go ahead and just plug them into a computer now and get the computer to do all the heavy lifting for us. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so let's do that. So here I have a Python script in Jupyter Notebook, which is on GitHub. I'll put a link to that in the description. So you can go and look at it in your own time if you have Python and want to see in more detail how it works. So just to begin with, what we're to remind ourselves of what we see on the show, this yellow line here is the path of the ship and the fire of the thruster occurs and apparently it changes the ship's motion pretty drastically. It turns it 90 degrees and then starts it circling outside of the plane, corkscrewing around outside of the plane it was traveling in. Is this right? Not really. Uh, could you have circular motion? Yeah. So this is uh, what we're going to look at. So here we have our lovely mathematics for how we can how we can solve the differential equation. It's really straightforward and easy to do once you have this thing here, ODE int, which does all the heavy lifting for you. So we just hit enter and then it will run through that differential equation and give us the solution. And in this case, the solution that we want is the distance at any given point. And in this situation, we're just saying that the ship spins at the same rate as we're counting time. So we'll just say it spins at a degree per second. The spin rate doesn't matter so much, it just changes um, the radius, but we'll get to that in a bit. So then if we do this bit here, we can see the path, this red line is the path that the ship would take if the nose thruster fired and the main engine was still going. It would do this strange squiggle through the sky. Now this is as it would be seen by an outside observer. So Alex and Bobby on the Razorback would see this red squiggle go through the sky. They wouldn't see, they wouldn't see this image here where suddenly it turns 90 degrees and it starts circling around. The motion is still contained in the XY plane, in the uh, plane it was traveling in, and it does this weird squiggle. So what is this weird squiggle? Well, we can look at it closer by choosing different uh, reference frames. So one reference frame we could choose is to say, all right, this case here, there was an initial velocity relative to the observer. So what would this curve look like if we chose an observation frame where there was no initial velocity? It was a co-moving frame before the, um, the spinning started happening. Well, we just run this here and we get this bumpy line here. Now, one thing I missed was that this is known as a cycloid. And cycloids are a type of circular motion, which we'll see in a moment. But the way this traces out on the sky looks something like, oh, that's some good software gore. I'm gonna need to restart this notebook. All right, so it traces out this path on the sky with the red line. If we start in the same reference frame before the ship starts spinning, it traces out these arches. Okay, so it looks pretty strange still. It has this weird shape to it. But a great point that a lot of people pointed out was that this 
is actually a pretty regular type of motion in a certain frame of reference. And that frame of reference is an inertial frame, and a frame that's not accelerating, that follows, that moves across the x-axis here, with the average velocity that the ship has as it jumps up and down over these loops. And if we were to plot that in the correct reference frame, we end up with a circle. So in this case, we're just subtracting the average x velocity from our previous result. And it turns from this weird M squiggle to this nice circle. And this is because the cycloid, which we see up here, is described by a circle as it rolls over a surface, as you can see in this little video here. If we plot this, like in the videos we had before, we see that it draws out this nice circle. This circle is only visible to someone moving in this particular reference frame. In another reference frame, it'll look like a completely different squiggle. One of the viewers, Domentico, saw my video and went away and tried to recreate what happened to Naomi, where they set up a nice circular path like this and they got a Kerbal to sit within the uh, circular path so it was in the right reference frame. And you can see in their video, which I'll link in the description as well, that the Kerbal more or less follows along with the ship as it circles around it. But for Naomi, since this is an accelerating reference frame going around the circle, as soon as she jumps off the ship, she will fly off at a tangent in whatever weird reference frame she finds herself in. So it's perhaps easier to see in, uh, in this reference frame, if she were to jump off the ship here, she would go skyrocketing off this way. If she were to jump off it here, she'd go off in that direction. So there would be no situation where Naomi could jump off the ship and end up within the circle. But that's not to say you can't have a ship circle someone in deep space. It's relatively easy to do if you set up the motions in the correct way and choose the right reference frames. So this hopefully solves all of the lingering concerns that everyone had. I should have picked this up the first time around, so sorry about that. But it's a really interesting bit of physics, and if you want to play around with the physics in this notebook, change the parameters, see what you get, then you can check it out, and I'll put the link to the GitHub repo um, in the description. But as for the expanse, this path wasn't accurate, all of the motion would be contained in the plane and they would see something like this and Naomi would move off into the distance and not be bound by the ship like we see in the show. So that's why the show isn't physically accurate here, but it's kind of accurate. It is a plausible situation in some capacity. Anyway, hopefully this clears up all of the remaining lingering confusions around this uh, topic and I was very happy to see all of the comments and discussions that happened about this um, and it certainly helped me understand the situation better myself. So thank you all for watching and hope to see you next time.